SoFi stock, there's panic setting in. I want to explain exactly what's going on here, why this is potentially a big deal. I was just surfing around on X for the last hour or so, and so I wanted to speak about that. We're getting a lot of other things to speak about in this video here today as well, including Bezos unloading a ton of Amazon stock, uh, NVIDIA earnings, which this might be the last video I produce before NVIDIA earnings come out, uh, Palo Alto Network stock crashing. This is a busy, busy action-packed video here today, folks. I'll ask in return, smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're, we either just hit 40,000 subscribers or are about to hit 40,000 subscribers on the channel. And by the way, if you want to join me for that Twitch live stream tomorrow, uh, the NVIDIA one, live earnings reaction with Cheesecake Factory and all the other stocks, yeah, check out pinned comment down there, okay? So there's some panic setting in here regarding SoFi. This is out of data-driven investing here. There is a possible tax refund disaster coming for SoFi members and therefore SoFi's reputation. In the words of Reddit's Bender9000, SoFi is slowly walking into a reputation risk disaster. Members are being underserved. Support shows no indication of working to resolve the or lessen the issue. Here's what's going on. Members are experiencing rejection of IRS tax refund deposits made to their SoFi banking accounts. Uh-oh. This affects members who, one, file their taxes using TurboTax. TurboTax is insanely popular, certainly one of the most, if not the most popular tax-related software out there. So that's a lot of people, okay? Two, elect to have fees paid out of their refunds. And three, direct the tax refund to be sent to their SoFi banking account. This is where SoFi comes into play, right? When a TurboTax using member elects to have fees paid out of their return, TurboTax processes the refund using Santa Barbara Tax Products Group. SBTPG processes a refund with fees deducted. However, they allegedly code the deposit for a business account instead of a personal account. Uh-oh. When the deposit reaches SoFi, it is rejected due to the mismatched business personal coding. This is the point at which member discovers there's a problem. Once rejected, the deposit is returned to the IRS to be reprocessed as a check, which takes months. Note, the issue does not affect TurboTax members who do not elect to have fees paid out of their refund. This is definitely not good. SoFi needs to be seen as a bank of the future where things run smoothly and work properly. If hundreds of thousands or more members have their tax refunds returned to the IRS, it will reflect very poorly on SoFi, even if the root cause is not their fault. And then he tagged Anthony Noto, SoFi, SoFi IR, all those sorts of things, right? So 100%, right? This is something that has to be taken into account. This is something that has to be fixed ASAP. And, you know, it shouldn't have to come to, I'm assuming this data-driven investor is an, is obviously an investor of SoFi, right? Shouldn't have to come to an account like this to have to alert SoFi what's going on. They should be on top of this, right? It shows definitely, it shows a lapse in judgment and kind of being on top of their game. Let's just call it that. Because something like this that is big like this, you shouldn't just let this fall through the cracks. So, you know, hopefully this is handled ASAP because here's the thing, okay, to, you know, I'm recording this, it's February 20th. If you get a refund, you file as soon as you possibly can, right? Because you want that money. The people that usually wait to the end are the people that owe money. So naturally, a lot of people are already filing or have filed now at this point in time are now at that point where they're waiting for their refund. So, you know, mass amounts of refunds are going to be going out, I would say, over this next three to four weeks. So SoFi has to get on this ASAP, man. Um, and yeah, if, if this is, at the end of the day, it's all going to fall back on SoFi. If certain things are not ran properly and these checks go back to the IRS, and then or, or these, these, you know, the money goes back to the IRS, then the IRS has to send a check and it takes months, it's all going back to SoFi. It's going to make SoFi look bad. Everybody always blames it on whoever their end product is, right? The end, you know, whatever it is. And in this situation, it would be SoFi. So, you know, I, I don't know, you know, what they can do, but they got to get it fixed. That's all I know, right? That's why you make the big bucks. Get a problem like this fixed in ASAP. 
or it will cause a lot of reputational harm, no doubt. Next up here, uh, Mav uh, said, you know, Palo Alto network stock crashing, NVIDIA preview. A lot of people are running to that conclusion about, you know, here's the deal, okay? Palo Alto networks just missed guidance massively. Sure, if NVIDIA misses guidance by a big, large number, yeah, NVIDIA stock will, will crash 20%. That, for sure, that, that's in the bag if they miss their guide. But you're really going to, really you know, think that NVIDIA is going to miss that guide? I wouldn't bet against them. That's all I'll say about that. You saw the last several guidance, the last three guides out of this company. I wouldn't want to bet against them and say, oh, yeah, you know, th that guidance is going to miss like Palo Alto Networks. You know, you got to think about these things a little bit, right? Now, this matters for me because I own a lot of this stock. It's, what, the third biggest position, I believe, in the public account? Jeff Bezos just filed to sell 14 million additional shares of Amazon stock worth $2.4 billion. Bezos has now sold $8.4 billion worth of Amazon stock so far in 2024. So, large number. Bezos' net worth, probably, I mean, if I had, off the top of my head, probably between $150 and $200 billion net worth, right? So, this is actually a pretty decent sized number of stock he's selling there, right? Which, it makes you think, like, does he know something? about the economy and the stock market, a crash coming, does he, you know, that is a pretty aggressive sale there, right? Does he, and my thing is, it's so much money, what's he going to do with all that money? You know what I mean? Like, like if you want to go buy, I don't know, uh, another mansion or several mansions, okay, $100 million there, a couple hundred million dollars, not $8.4 billion. Let's say he wants to go buy himself a new private jet, that's, that's little money. He wants to go buy, a, I don't know, a new yacht. Okay, that's big money, but it's like, even that's 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 not $8.4 billion. It's not even remotely close to that. I mean, heck, he could buy cruise ships for, for <laughs> a whole bunch of cruise ships for that price, right? Um, so I don't know why he wants all that money. Unless he thinks maybe Amazon stock setting up for a crash or something. I, I, I don't know. Or unless he wants to get ready to give it to philanthropy. But at that, why not just wait? You know what I mean? Until you pass on. So I don't know. It's weird. I will say that. I think it's very weird. It's so much money. You're not going to do anything with all that money. It's ridiculous. Unless, unless, there's one thing that maybe, maybe the only other thing I can think of is maybe, just maybe, he's going to buy a sports team. There, he might buy a sports team. That's the only other thing I can think. Okay? Because SpaceX... You know, I don't think he really needs to funnel billions of dollars more of his personal money into SpaceX. I think they can just, you know, have, they have plenty of investors. Or not, excuse me, not SpaceX. I mentioned Blue Origin. SpaceX is, is Elon Musk's company. Blue Origin. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's going to buy some sort of sports franchise. Because, you know, if you buy a huge sports franchise, something massive, you're looking at several billion dollars for that, usually, if it's, you know, one of the major, major sports. So maybe he wants to make a move. Maybe he wants to buy an NFL team or something like that, which is certainly a possibility. But, I mean, outside of that, it's just like, I don't know why he needs all that money, right? I saw this one out there. This is out of an account called StockGo. It says, SoFi trades at $8 billion market cap. Company sitting on $3 billion of cash. That's 38% of the entire company in cash alone, Okay. Listen, it's a bank. It's a really poor way of looking at it. If it was, you know, if you want to look at a Palantir like that, because Palantir is actually sitting on massive cash and no debt, and they don't know a bunch of people deposits and, and all those sorts of things, okay, you could look at it that way. But I think this is a really poor way of looking at this. And thank goodness somebody else, you know, is, is a little higher level out there as well. This person, you know, messaged back. They said, if you're going to talk about a bank's cash, you also need to talk about their debt. SoFi having $3 billion cash with $5 billion plus in debt isn't nearly the flex you think it is. For reference, Wells Fargo has $433 billion in cash and $315 billion in debt with a market cap of 160, or $186 billion. I say this as a SoFi shareholder 100%. Like, you know, I think sometimes just people get desperate for, I, I don't know, like I'm just like maybe not up to a high enough level to like understand a more complex matter like this or maybe just, you know, looking for something to talk about. I think I, I'm like, you know, that when I read that, I'm just like, 
ugh, like as as somebody that I you know I'm now officially a SoFi shareholder. I own some shares in the stock, but I, I saw something like that. I'm like, oh my gosh! And the problem is, other people might eat something like that up, and they think, oh yeah, you know. And it's like, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. It's not what. It's not what it seems. Okay. Next one up here. This one's out of bar chart. Truly incredible how closely Nvidia is mirroring the chart of Cisco surge during the dot com. So you know. This is being seen all over the place out there right now. Okay, everybody's using this. First off, these charts are not that similar. Look at the massive divergences between NVIDIA and the past. Look at these insane divergences, right? Insane divergences. Just because, oh, the chart lines up there. It means nothing. It's completely irrelevant. The business models of NVIDIA, business models of Cisco are, are massively different, okay? If those happen to crash both at the same exact time, I can tell you it's pure luck nothing more but once again people eat stuff like this up and uh you know i don't know man people have been i don't know what the the there's like some sort of how do i put it almost like um so some something wrong with people mentally where they just want to continue to try to bet against the stock and just have their lunch handed to them and continue to try to buy puts and puts and puts and at some point they'll print but i mean jeez you know, they've been doing it since 150, 250, 350, 450, 550, 650, 700 plus. It's like at some point in time, you just got to say, okay, let's let this story play out a little bit. And then we'll see if it's worth, you know, getting on the put side. But I mean, people are just getting destroyed on that stock. So this one out of Game of Trades it says smart money has been selling like never before. <laughs> Not true, but you can say that. Uh, they have been, they've sold a lot in the past. Okay. So this, if you just want to look at, January 2023 through January 2024, sure. But guess what? We just came off of the worst NASDAQ-related crash that we had since the great financial crisis. Let's not forget, the NASDAQ fell, what, 37%, 38% peak to trough from the, the highs in Q4 of 22 to the lows in Q4 of, uh, 20, uh, of 22, right? So... You know, that was a 37, 38%. So how many executives or, or insiders, we can say, how many of them really wanted to sell at the you know beginning of last year? It didn't really make sense. Like, pricing was bad. Guess what? Pricing's come back massively. So if you're going to take some profits, it makes a lot more sense to take profits now versus, you know, sell stocks a year ago, right? It's just, it's just common sense. It doesn't really mean anything. It just means, like, stocks have gone up a lot. Like, and if you're going to cash some shares, it's a lot better to cash them now than it was 12 months ago, right? I mean, 12 months ago, Meta stock was, what, 100 something dollars? Now it's 450 plus. Well, what, when did it make sense to cash? <laughs> NVIDIA stock at this time last, last year was what? Less than 200? And now it's close to 700. When did it make, you know, that's just common sense. I don't think there's anything to be derived there other than stocks have gone up a lot. Of course, you're going to see people cash, especially coming. Why would you sell it this time last year? It was already at the crash. I saw this one out there. The state of the world economy is in this man's hands. Oh, man. Just people make it out to be such a big thing, right? Such a big thing. And, you know, to back to the fascination about, first off, this earnings does not make or break NVIDIA. It doesn't. As much as people want to make it up into their own minds as like, this is make or break. This is their whole career. You know, this is like saying the, the Super Bowl that was played, you know, the weekend ago was, you know, that was Patrick Mahomes' career. Like, his career was on the line. No, of course not. It was just one of many games he plays in over his career, right? And this earnings is just one of many earnings for NVIDIA over time. This is not make or break for NVIDIA. If they come out and the stock goes down, who cares? Like, like for Nvidia, it doesn't matter. You want to see, you want to see how much it matters. Okay, here's Nvidia's max stock chart. The stock's up one hundred and seventy-five thousand percent, and along that way, they've had massive amounts of corrections, crashes, some epic crashes in there. At the end of the day, it's one hundred seventy-five thousand percent gainer in the last ten years. NVIDIA is up 15,000% with, in, I can tell you, in the last 10 years, there's been plenty of corrections, crashes, and even some epic crashes for NVIDIA. No pun intended, because it doesn't AMD have some epic chips. Um, but at the end of the day, like, it's another earnings. You know, I understand everybody's making it out to be the Super Bowl, and it's huge for the market. But for NVIDIA, 
It's just another earnings. And this company, they've just been one of the best innovators in the world over the past, I would say, 30 years. And they continue to be to this day, right? And so it's just another one. It's just another one for them. Mark, it's big for the market, but it's just another one for them. It's just another one for Jensen. So Capital, this was at a um, Heisenberg, says, So Capital One is allowed to buy Discover Financial in a $35 billion deal, but JetBlue is not allowed to buy Spirit for $3.8 billion. Do regulators just do rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> Uh, I like what this person said. The right question is not what's in your wallet, because remember, that's Capital One, but who's in your wallet? <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Silly, silly. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I'm just like, wow. Next one up here. This was also out of Game of Trades. The labor market has been slowly weakening. Job openings have been falling off a cliff. Such a sharp, uh, such sharp declines have only occurred three times since 2000. Dot-com bubble, financial crisis, Rona. Each of them ended in a sharp economic downturn, right? So, first off, in terms of the massive sharp decline there, right? That was that was a run that already happened. So, it wasn't like it was a precursor to that, right? Now, in terms of job openings declining, right? Yeah, no doubt. But we were up to ridiculous numbers. Like, we need a fall in, in terms of job openings. Once this number gets back at least in here, then we can talk. Then we can talk about, ooh, okay, maybe we could eventually have a recession come. But we're still so dang high when it comes to these job openings. We need those, this still massive gap here to get filled in terms of job openings. When that happens and we get at least here, we don't have to get all the way down to great financial crisis, right? Once we get here, then you can start to really talk about, ooh, boy, if this economy starts to go south, we could be in trouble because the jobs aren't out there like they were before, right? Because for the past few, you know, many years, if you lost your job, there's plenty of jobs to get out there. And still to this day, right now, if you lose your job, there's plenty of job opportunities out there right now. Now, six months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now, two years from now, that could be a very different situation. But for right now, there's plenty of opportunity out there. I can tell you that much. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, something that's very important to keep an eye on. And especially once we kind of get into this range, then you can start to talk, okay? Next up here, this one's out of Zero Hedge. Two years ago, S&P energy sector was 5x the size of NVIDIA. Today, NVIDIA is bigger than all the energy stocks in SP500 combined, says Goldman Sachs, right? Sounds like cool. And it's one of those things that gets everybody going, oh, NVIDIA's a bubble, it's a bubble, short it, put it, everything, right? Like they've been doing for the last year. But, and getting wrecked on. But at the end of the day, it's irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. And guess what? Two years ago, let's see, if we go back 18 months ago, NVIDIA was in one of the most epic crashes it's ever had, and that's saying a lot, right? And energy, if we go back two years ago, it just went through one of its biggest bull cycles we had seen in, in a long, long time, right? So, something to factor in there. And I can tell you, if we went back, you know, to the time when I first got in the market, dude, all the biggest all the biggest stocks in the market at that time were all energy companies. They were all energy companies. It was ExxonMobil and Chevron and all those guys, right? Royal Dutch Shell and BP and all those guys. And at the end of the day, like, look at all the biggest companies today, you know, it's not even, those companies aren't even close to being up there compared to the Apples and the Microsofts and those sorts of companies. They, they've they grown much more profitable than, you know, people had ever seen coming. So it, it's a cool thing, but it's actually irrelevant in the end. And it's actually just another one of those things that gets everybody all jazzed up to think, bubble, 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 bubble. Palo Alto Networks is now down almost 20% after hours following its earnings. Yeah, Palo Alto Networks, I was looking at that one a little bit, might be a bit of an opportunity. The problem with Palo Alto is, man, valuation is still going to be rich tomorrow. But the company does have nice growth. And I know their guide wasn't the strongest guide. That's for certain, right? It came under analyst expectations. But numbers are still pretty dang impressive out of Palo Alto. So, you know, I could see some people actually buying that dip pretty aggressively tomorrow. Let's put it that way, okay? Next one up here, NVIDIA is currently Wall Street's most traded stock. Yeah, I mean, the way I would put it is it's it's the Super Bowl, right? Everybody wants to get a bet in, and, and that's kind of my views on that, okay? Twitch tomorrow, folks, massive live stream coming up. Can't wait to join it. It might be, a, it's probably going to be like a three-hour beast. So that'll be pinned comment down there. Also, if you want to follow me on X, that'll be pinned comment down there. Much love, and have a great day.